Hey, they're all off the trees. That's all I got to say right now. I hear you. They're off the trees. I got about a couple more hours work to do, and I'll be done too. Yeah. Yeah. Next big project is to take the mower and the bagger off of the tractor and put it aside and put the snowblower on. The tractor. All right, we are live. All right. Um, um, this is uh, Vice Chair Ezra Scott. And uh, Mac is not going to be able to attend today, so I'll be running the meeting uh, live from Studio Z here in New Buffalo on Zoom. Uh, we're going to start uh, with an invocation uh, given by Commissioner Jim Curran. Thank you, Ezra. Let us pray. Lord, we are meeting today to conduct matters of county business. Guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Bless this meeting with your divine intelligence and help us do right by all concerned. Please share a little of your wisdom with us so our affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for your guidance and your heavenly blessings over our meeting today. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing uh, for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Okay, commissioners, please remember that you're just saying your name and that you're via Zoom and then where you're at. Okay. Chickering. Bill Chickering via Zoom in St. Joseph, Michigan. Curran. Commissioner Jim Curran coming to you live from Ninth Township via Zoom. Freeling. Commissioner Freeling, Zoom. Baroda Township. Harrison. Commissioner Harrison is present via Zoom from Lincoln Township. Hugo. Present via Zoom in South Bend. Hinkleman. Here, uh, Here. present via Zoom in Bainbridge Township. Majeric. Here, uh, Zooming uh, from Niles, Michigan. Meeks. Mr. Meeks from Ben Carter Township. Scott. Commissioner Scott, live from on Zoom from New Buffalo Township. Walworth. Walworth here on Zoom from Coloma. Yarbrough. Amy Yarbrough on Zoom from the city of Benton Harbor. Elliot. 11 present, one absent, four undeclared. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the November 5th, 2020 meeting. Um, may I have a motion, please? Mr. Vice Chair, this is Commissioner Freeling. I would make that motion. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Freeling. Uh, is there a second? Commissioner Meeks, so I'll second that. Any discussion, changes, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Chickering. Yes. Curran. Yes. Freeling. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Hugo. Yes. Eagleman. Yes. Majeric. Yes. Meeks. Yes. Scott. Yes. Yarborough. Yes. Paul Yes. yes. Motion carried. Thank you, uh, 
Madam Clerk, communications, please. Received an email notice on Tuesday, November 10th from the Board of Education of the St. Joseph Public Schools that an emergency meeting was held on November 8th, 2020 to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on the district of possible alternate instruction. Email notice received on Tuesday, November 10th from the Board of Education from Buchanan Community Schools that an emergency meeting was held on November 10th, 2020 to discuss the rise in COVID-19 cases and quarantine students and staff in the district and how to proceed. That's all. Thank you. Um, let's go right into committee reports and we will start out with uh, Commissioner Curran, the Chair of Admit. Thank you, Ezra. Thank you, sir. Uh, last Thursday, after our uh, Board of Commissioners meeting, the Administration Committee met. Um, we first had uh, Carrie Smetanka Haney from the court come in and inform us that the state court administrator has moved them uh, from phase three back to phase two. Uh, they were in phase three for about three weeks uh, because of the rise of the COVID numbers. Uh, they have returned to uh, phase two, which means uh, uh, jury trials are on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, no in-person filings, uh, those type of things. Um, she said that almost all counties in the Lower Peninsula have been moved back to that phase. Uh, there are a couple counties in the Northern Lower and some in the UP, um, who stayed in phase three, didn't go back. <clears throat> so they're making those adjustments and um, they will uh, evaluate the situation weekly um, to see if they can return to uh, phase three. Um, we had uh, Todd Johnson come in and give us an update on the uh, remodeling of the friend of the court over to courthouse. Uh, we've reported on that before. We've uh, sent out the schematics to you. You've seen them. <laughs> Um, we went ahead and approved that project and told them to move forward. Um, the funding will come from uh, CARES Act funding and it will come out of this year's uh, budget, but won't be completed until 2021. Um, so they got to go ahead to go and do that. Um, uh, Brian Bailey and uh, uh, County Administrator Brian Desette uh, talk to us about the uh, Silver Beach soil erosion. And I understand between then and now, uh, finance and PHSC has also had that presentation. Um, we, uh, we moved it forward uh, so the other two committees could review it and we could get that project started. Uh, Paul Janka Jr. Uh, came in to see us from uh, Indian Defense Department. His father, uh, is a, an attorney and he's contracted with the county. Um, you know, Paul reviewed our county policy and, and, and just uh, uh, his own personal feelings that he didn't think it was right that when his father uh, submits billings to the county that he should be the one to review it and approve it. So there were a couple of options uh, discussed and and what we decided on was that any um, invoices from uh, his father would be reviewed by our corporate counsel first. Uh, then it would go to County Administrator Brian Desset, uh, and then back to Indigent Defense for, uh, for payment. Uh, Tiffany Peterson came in to see us from Animal Control, and she informed us that she does not have a livestock fee schedule. Uh, the fee schedule deals with dogs and cats, but when she takes in livestock, uh, there is no fee schedule. And sometimes she houses those animals for some time and has to care for them and feed them. And so what she proposed to us was a fee schedule um, for uh, housing those animals. Um, it is a violation of the law to have livestock running at large so she would impound them and the impoundment fee uh, for a first offense would be $50 and then a daily fee of $15 uh, as long as we held the animal. 
Uh, a second offense impoundment fee would be $70. Uh, daily fee again, 15. Uh, third offense would be $100 uh, with the daily fee again being uh, $15 uh, per day. And it was kind of nice that we had um, <clears throat> um, the prosecutor, uh, Steve, uh, with us in that call and he was able to review um, the policy change that she was proposing um, because he may be involved in that process if it's a criminal matter. And so he provided input, input into the policy. And so that is on, I believe, the agenda today for your approval is to approve the uh, uh, livestock fee. Um, Jason uh, Latham with the road department was in to see us. Um, was there a question? Um, yes, uh, may I ask uh, Mr. Scott, <laughs> um, Mamie Yarbrough, Zoom, Benton Harbor. These, these dollars are in line with when we were having to pay someone else to keep them when we didn't have a barn. Uh, is it in line with the area? you know, this amount, because $15 a day, that's, that sounds like a real reasonable price. Yes, it is. And, and Tiffany did, um, uh, she checked with all the, uh, the area uh, agencies that provide this service. And mm -hmm. that's how she arrived at the fee. Okay. And, it, and yes, it is very reasonable. It's on the low end of the scale. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the question. Any other questions? Okay, we had uh, Jason uh, Latham come in to see us from the road department. Um, during the last storm, a tree uh, blew over, um, fell onto the road. The road department went out and removed the tree from the roadway and pushed it off onto the, uh, the shoulder of the ditch area. And then the uh, property owner had the tree uh, cut up and removed the property owner felt that it was the road department's responsibility and so sent us an invoice <laughs> and wanted reimbursement uh, for him cutting up the tree. Uh, Jason went out, he looked at the situation, he took photographs and denied that request because the tree was not within the road right away. Um, the property owner appealed it, uh, so it went to the county administrator, Brian DeSette, um, Brian reviewed it and also denied it. Well, the last step in the appeal process is the administration committee. So Jason presented the case, Brian was present, and from all the information that he provided to us, uh, that the tree was not within the road right of way, it was on the property owner's uh, property. And according to our policy, if the tree is within the road right of way, the road department is responsible and will take care of it. If it's not within the road right away, then it is the uh, property owner's responsibility. So at the conclusion, we asked um, County Administrator Brian Desset, uh to draft a letter to the property owner uh, telling him the process that we followed and that his request was being denied. Got a question? Yes, sir. Uh, Jim, when you say that it wasn't on the right of way, are you talking about after it fell or its position before it fell down? Uh, it's the position it is in before it falls. Okay. So in other words, where the trunk is located. If the, if the okay. trunk of the tree is within the right of way, it's ours. If it's outside the right of way, it's the property owners. Okay. That's what I was thinking, but I just want to clarify. Okay. Thank Great. You. Jim, real quick, a question is the right of way 33 feet. Is that what the right of way is? Yes, that's what they're figuring is from the center of the roadway out 33 feet. All right, thank you. You bet. Um, while Jason was in, he also talked to us about the uh, annual township meetings uh, that he has, um, and those should have been conducted um, Tuesday. So it was all done via Zoom, um, but that should be completed because that was supposed to have been done um, Tuesday. Um, we have a couple of resolutions uh, for you today. Um, resolution that ends in 371 authorizes a speed study to be done on Maiden Lane from Hollywood Road to Niles Road, which is M63, 
uh, in Royalton Township. Uh, resolution ending in 372 is a speed study on old M60 from Boehner Road to the New Buffalo city limits in New Buffalo Township. So those are on the agenda for today. Also resolution ending in 378 is uh, a realignment of some personnel between the prosecutor's office and the friend of the court. Um, the law changed that would allow for consolidation of uh, services um, and the uh, prosecutor's office, the friend of the court and the chief judge uh, took a look at it to see if uh, consolidating those services would be more efficient uh, for the county. And so they, uh, uh, they recommended those changes to us. Uh, we approved them and that's in the resolution 378. Um, our uh, human resources uh, talked to the, uh, there's, there's two positions that are union positions that are in the prosecutor's office. Uh, the union agreed uh, to release those two positions. So they're now in the friend of the court as non-union positions. Um, uh, grade and pay is the same. So there's four positions that will be going uh, from the prosecutor's office staff to friend of the court staff. And then we may, just- May I, may I ask? Uh, yes, ma'am. Is it just a formality or are these jobs that are being uh, positions that are being moved to, so they can use them? Will they advertise for people or is it just a transfer within? These are transfers within. These are, uh, they're, they're people in those positions now. Okay. Um, and they're just basically going from prosecutor's office supervision to friend of the court uh, supervision. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Jim? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, just a question. If they're moving from the prosecutor's office to friend of the court, um, are we going to be uh, brought in and asked to approve um, more positions for the prosecutor's office because they've lost people? No, not because of this. I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't preclude them from coming and asking us for right. people. But for these positions, no, uh, that function will still be performed by these people. It'll be just under the supervision of the friend of the court instead of the prosecutor's office. And, but I also mentioned that so that you understand that um, when you look at total personnel that the, the prosecutor is responsible for, it's now going to show four less people. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank they you. They just got transferred over. There's the same functions being done. Uh, everything's the same. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Great. And, and excuse me, but that's what I wondered when we looked at the budget, you know, we saw where there were places that had not been used at all that had been allotted. So that's right. what I wondered if that was yep. in that. Okay. okay. Yeah. These were not vacant positions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And that's pretty much our report from the uh, administration committee. I would look to uh, the uh, other three members. Did I miss anything or do you uh, have anything to add? I think you covered it pretty well. Mr. Chair. Jim? Yes, sir. Uh, a question. Uh, back to the uh, situation. Um, I agree with the way you handled the billing aspect of it. But when, when legal work is being done, who supervises Paul Jancha Sr.'s legal work is that Paul Jancha Jr. supervising his work? Supervising his work. Uh, I guess right offhand, I really don't know, Bill, but I would I would guess that because he is the head of that 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 department, that he is probably responsible for the work performed. The question came in as to the billing. And that's why we suggested to go to corporate counsel first, because he will know if the work performed in the amount of time spent on that particular function uh, would be reasonable. Okay, I, um, 
I have absolute, absolute confidence in both of the Janches. I know them. They are excellent. Lawyers. I do think that maybe corporate counsel needs to look at the reporting relationship here because I think that if not a conflict of interest within the uh, county's rules, it may be a conflict of interest uh, within the bar association rules. I don't know. It's worth looking at. Thank you. Okay, so what you what you're uh, what you're asking me to look into then, Bill, is the scope of work being performed, not just the invoicing. Absolutely. Yes. Thank Perfect. you. Thank I you. will do that. Um, this is Commissioner Scott. Um, this is for Jim and Bill Chickering. Um, do we have a? I believe we have a deputy prosecutor. Correct. Um, is that something that that just that one particular uh, person could monitor the deputy prosecutor for the scope of the work or the, the not the deputy prosecutor, but the deputy for the indigent defense. Right, right. You know, I don't I think don't, that solves it, Ezra, because the deputy reports to the director. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, think, so, I don't know the answer. I'm just asking the question. Okay. And, and I don't either. I'm just... Uh, Figured I'd throw that out there. Thank you. Okay. And and uh, I will look into that bill because, you know, the whole idea was to have an independent eyes look at it. And so I will, uh, I'll talk to Brian who can talk to Judge Duane and, uh, and look at the scope of work and see what their recommendation is there as well. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. If there's nothing else, uh, oh. Mr. Vice Chair, that's, uh, that's our report. Uh, Mr. Curran, I have a question. I you waited till everybody else was done. <laughs> uh, I would like to know if the admit committee has looked into or addressed something that um, might might be of concern, and that is with Tiffany out at animal control. Um, in my opinion, um, she is an essential department during this COVID. And I do not believe right now that the way things are done, uh, her and her staff um, are not eligible for any CARES Act money uh, because of their MCOLs and they're not part of the Sheriff's Department. So has that come up at all um, to the admin committee? And if not, maybe we just need to take a look at that and, and find out for the next uh, round of funding for CARES Act. But that has not come up to date, um, but I will inquire, uh, Ezra, and and see if there is an interest and see if there's CARES Act money that would uh, that would cover anything like that. All right, go ahead, Bill. Point of information, gentlemen. Uh, I'm gonna give a little background on what we're trying to do when I give my PHSC report, which touches exactly on that subject. Okay. Oh, okay, very good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm reading your mind. I'm sorry, you're, you're up next. So if there's no other questions for uh, uh, Commissioner Kern, we'll fast forward uh, to Commissioner Chickering, the chair of PHS. Great, thank you. Thank I you. might as well use your segue here, Ezra, to uh, uh, report a little bit on this. Uh, the Barron County Commission has, on at least one occasion and probably more, gone on record with the state of Michigan that we believe there are people beyond those in the sheriff's department and the jail who are true first responders acting in their capacities in the line of duty that brings them into a dangerous situation. We've talked about these before. We've approached uh, the governor and um, we, we've made no progress. Um, on uh, last Friday, uh, Administrator DeSette set up a conference call with myself as head of PHSC since we are trying to push this issue. Um, he and I spoke with Senator Lasada and Dan Carrick, who is Senator Lasada's chief of staff, if you will, and reviewed this issue. And um, we talked, Shelly Jasper was part of the conversation. Uh, we talked with the Senator about specifically people like cooks in the jail and the juvenile center who are working in a dangerous environment. Mm -hmm. uh, 
certain people within animal control, uh, certainly the road officers who are uh, assisting in any number of uh, situations where there's contact with the public. Certainly the health department comes to mind and there may be others. Um, the, uh, after some good background information, uh, the Senator uh, quite frankly was open to uh, looking into this on our behalf. Um, she uh, was not sure how much CARES Act money was left, but uh, she did ask us to come up with uh, a list of folks that work for the county that we felt would fall into this first responder, employee at risk, what, however you want to term it. Um, and we agreed to do that. Um, and I think Brian and Shelley are working with the various departments to come up with uh, a list of those who we feel should be recognized and with some description of what duties these people perform. Uh, and we're gonna forward that to the, to the Senator. She said she would be um, in, in touch with uh, the appropriations people to find, about, find out about funding and start some dialogue um, at her level within the state government. So don't know, she made no promises as certainly mm -hmm. she did not, but uh, we got her attention and I think she was philosophically in agreement with what we were trying to do. Thank you. I, I just thought about that because, you know, I know there's that issue uh, when I found out it was just for the, uh, you know, certain certain ones, the sheriff's department, basically full time. And I thought, wow, but Tiffany there, those people are full time also, and they're on the front lines, but they're not, they're not part of the sheriff's department. So yeah, yeah with the MCOL certification. So that's why I wanted to ask that question, you know, but thank sure. you. I didn't know that you had already been looking into that, but I should have realized. Ah, no, no, no. We're working <laughs> on this all together. So um, I think Brian and Shelly have got that bull by the horns and they're charging $15 a day for storage and we're going to uh, move forward. Oh, um, so let me uh, uh, talk a little bit about our PHSC meeting, which was Tuesday afternoon um, as uh, Chairman Curran has already reported. Uh, we got the full update from Brian Bailey and Brian Desette on the Silver Beach erosion abatement process. Um, we're certainly in agreement um, with the other two committees and the administration that this is something we should move forward on. Um, we also talked with uh, Brian Bailey, the uh, grant that had been requested for the piece of property adjacent to the Paw Paw River Park, apparently has been approved or at least tentatively approved mm -hmm. um, by uh, the um, foundation. Um, so that they're providing, I think it was $80,000, maybe $90,000 towards the purchase of that property. Um, we agreed that we should go ahead the Parks Department has allocated $30,000 for their part of this property acquisition. Uh, and we agreed that they should go ahead and work towards the closing on this property. Um, I do, I do want to issue a word of caution that we within the committee had, which is that uh, in this time of uncertainty, um, the acquisition of the property, that's fine. That's been in the works, but we need to be equally or more concerned with preservation of existing properties. So, uh, you know, the, the money that could, should someday be used to develop this new piece of property at the Paw Paw River County Park uh, needs to be put in a very carefully controlled list of priorities just to make sure that because it's new, we don't spend money there when money needs to be spent elsewhere. And I'm sure all commissioners are similarly concerned about that kind of allocation of resources. Um, the other thing, big thing, we spent some time with Nikki Britton 
talking about several resolutions which are on the consent calendar today. Um, money for, uh, you know, more money for uh, COVID release, uh, relief, um, some, uh, some other things that are more routine. Um, one thing that came up and we, based on the administrator's recommendation, have moved that to the consent calendar today. Uh, but on, on behalf of Commissioner Freely and myself, I'd like to at least raise a concern for others to think about in the future. And that's resolution 382. And as a matter of background, um, some of you may know, I'm sure Mamie knows very well, uh, there's been another snafu with the water department in Benton Harbor. And the city of Benton Harbor has been under a boil order. Uh, because of that, apparently, the water filters that we have been uh, giving out to the city of Benton Harbor for lead abatement over the last two years are now apparently going to have to be replaced because they may well have been contaminated by this latest issue. Okay, big job continuing. Um, the state of Michigan has given the health department uh, $65,000 to assist in this continuing water filter distribution issue. Um, and the health department, because of that, has proposed, and it's in resolution 382, to uh, upgrade the current person who has been working on a part-time temporary basis to a full-time county employee. Um, we had a lot of discussion uh, based on Nikki's recommendations and the administrator's recommendations. Again, PHSC has moved this on to the consent calendar for everyone's consideration. But I do think it's important that once again, for the right reasons, but things that we as commissioners need to be concerned about. We have a temporary emergency situation that is being funded externally to meet those needs. And we're answering that temporary need with a permanent employee. Now, a year from now, 18 months from now, when hopefully the whole filter thing is over. Um, you know, what happens with that employee, et cetera, et cetera, state funding, et cetera, we've agreed we'll deal with it at the time. But I know that Administrator DeSette is keeping a checklist of these, these positions that fall into this category. Um, and I know my fellow commissioners in the future will do that as well. So that is a mere word of caution, not not a statement against resolution 382. Um, yes, Mamie. Mamie Yarbrough. So is it $65,000 for more filters or to make this person a full-time employee? The person, it's for the individual. Okay, and that came from the state, state of Michigan. At DHS or Eagle or somebody. Uh, right, okay, thank you, thank you. And there is a person doing this job that will apparently be hired and upgraded to permanent. And, and knows what to do, yeah, okay, um, thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise I have one I'd like to ask, but I'll give the other commissioners their chance if they have any questions for you. I have a, I have a comment. Okay. Um, when Bill talked about the uh, Silver Beach erosion, I forgot to mention that there was a nice article in the, uh, in the paper where the city of St. Joe uh, is going to partner with us uh, in, in taking care of that situation. So I think kudos needs to go to uh, our county administrator, Brian, for reaching out to them and, and also to them uh, for agreeing to fund half of that project. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Jim, because when we talked, when PHSC talked, we too very much extended our thanks and to the city of St. Joe, uh, John Hodgson and the city commission for getting on board with us in this project. Absolutely, good, good call there, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, we appreciate that very much. Yep. Um, okay, Bill, I have a question. 
Uh, was any consideration given to this um, uh, part-time basically to a full-time with the caveat written down in black ink on white paper um, that if funding disappears, then that full-time position disappears. Right. Like we did with the indigent defense and we did with the nine contact tracing. Right. And absolutely. That's part of the deal here. It's, it's there just like the eight contact uh, people that we hired uh, the special uh, sanitariums for sanitarians for the jail. Uh, you know, I think there's been a whole bunch of these kind of positions and it's really just a matter of keeping track of them. Right. And I think that our administrator will uh, be able to keep track of those on a separate basis because uh, uh, I think he's really on top of this, but yeah, that was my, that was my big question, but thank you. Right. Okay. Go right. ahead. And Brian, I, have, I have a follow-up question. Then. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, no, my follow-up question would be, I know when, uh, when Nikki presented the contact tracers to us, those nine positions, it was made very clear to those folks that when the funding goes away, their position goes away. Um, right. This recent position and, and hopefully any future positions, they're, they're made well aware of that case, correct, Bill? Yes, oh, absolutely, it's very, it's very transparent. Okay, and, and you're just reminding Brian to keep track of all those so that uh, when the funding does go away, we don't try to pick it up out of our budget. Well, I don't want to be reading the Palladium two years from now and wondering what's going on, you know? Right. Very good. Thanks, Bill. Thank, thank you very much. Thank and you. that's that's pretty much what we did. Um, are there any other questions for Chairman Chickering? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to Chairman Yarborough from Finance. Thank you very much, um, Commissioner Scott. Um, I would like to tell you that we started out uh, with the administrator just set and uh, talking about the uh, Silver Beach project, which you all have looked at and with good explanations. And um, it was told to us that the city of St. Joseph had agreed to um, go halfway uh, you know, on the amount. And then it was um, one of the things that has not been said, Edgewater Resources will be the overall project director. And they recommended that we add a 10% contingency to the bid. And the city of St. Joseph agreed. So the half that they're paying is the, the bid amount plus the contingency so that this can be done. And it's important that we pass this and get it going as soon as possible. They're hoping by December 15th to have it completed. And uh, they're real satisfied with the uh, this triple D with the low bid. Uh, they said, we've done business with them before. We have a good relationship and their work is excellent. And so that's what the finance committee, we came out of our meeting. Did we make a motion or did we? Yeah, motion to approve. And so we would like very much to say that we would like for that resolution to go through today. You can make it separate or, or put it all together however you'd like. Then we had a bid opening and the bid opening was for some, uh, I hate to say this, snow blades <laughs> uh, for the road department. And what we did was there were two different bids. We sent out uh, to six companies and three companies um, replied. And so on one of them, it was number 071. It was uh, three places that um, sent in. Bought Manufacturing Company at $16,152. Um, they were from New Kingstown, Pennsylvania. The other company was Truck and Trailer Specialists from Dutton, Michigan. Their bid was $14,394. The other company was St. Regis Culvert, Charlotte, Michigan, Charlotte, Michigan, $17,409. So we have a motion that we made. And because we had a little bit of confusion on opening the bid for St. Regis Culvert, the outside envelope said, uh, 02 when we were doing seven, I'm sorry, seven two when we were doing seven one. So we decided just to send it that way to the road department and they can determine uh, if it's really 02 or 01. 
and that's what we voted to do. Then we opened the second set of bid, which the ending number was 7-2. And the same companies bid it. And on the St. Regis Culvert of Charat, Michigan, their bid was $16,800. On bulk manufacturing of New Kingstown, Pennsylvania, their bid was $12,600. And on truck trailer specialties of Dutton, Michigan, their bid was $12,261. And 60 cents. And we sent those also made a motion to send those to the road department with the envelopes so that they can see uh, what happened and perhaps put the one with the other bid rather than that, that it'll be straightened out. And uh, there is a, a hurry for these also. So we want those to get to them so that they can um, engage the uh, blades because it's going to snow, it's coming. Amy, question? Yes. Yeah, if I heard you correctly, those bids were for three blades, correct? No, let me let me say what happened was we sent it out to six companies and three companies responded. And on one of them, I'm, I'm thinking the 7-1 was 200 blades. The 7-2 was 60 blades. Uh, is there someone else that wants to, is that a good enough explanation? Commissioner Hinkleman? Can you hear me, Commissioner Hinkleman? I can't. I'm sorry. I was trying to get my computer. Uh, yeah. It, it, would you explain what these are, Jim? These the are blade. these blades are uh, the replacement blade. The, the the bottom portion, the wearable portion, the wearable iron. Yes. They were bid by the foot, and it's the wearable portion of the blade, not the blade itself, but the actual wearable portion of the scraper blade. Sometimes they can run through those in a in a single shift, uh, depending on how much. Um, how much uh, concrete and asphalt they scrape across. And so it's for the wearable portion of the blade bid by the foot typically, so. Great, you thank you for that explanation. Yeah, because I was thinking three <laughs> blades at $16,000, $17,000 sounded about right. But then when she said 60 <laughs> at that yeah, time. Yeah, the other one was 200, because I thought it was, yeah, yeah, I thought it was a great big blade or something. I didn't know what it was, but there, right. Thank like you. another razor blade, I guess, for it to go. No, it's not, it's not like a razor blade, but it is for the wearable portion, the bolt-on portion. So there you go, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on the on the bids? So that's going to the uh, I'll probably already gone. Uh and, and thank you, Annette and uh Stephanie for opening the bids and, and presenting them to us. Our next person we met with was Lee Lal, our director of veteran services. Oh. And it was about, and, and hopefully you all got the uh, pictures of you know, the holders for the flags for the veterans. And those are uh, sold to the cemeteries and communities and veterans organizations so that they can be placed you know, at the gravesite and flag is, is placed in it. And uh, Lee had two, two bids and uh, what he would like to go with. And, and we as a committee agreed uh, there is one set that costs $23 each, and the other one is $14.25 each. And the $23 one was from a company in Stevensville who's been doing them for many years. And then the other one was from a company in South or North Carolina. And um, what we believe is that uh, it's a lot of work for the Stevensville, and they had continued doing it because they had been doing it but they're only able to make them like maybe two at a time and it's 500 that we're ordering. And so this may be a time that this we think is a time to uh, change to a company that can print them out and, and get it done. And so that's what we as a committee agreed to go with, uh, with the knowledge that Lee Law has, that we're not taking the business away from a, a local company. Um, then, uh, let me see. The other things was uh, Brian talked to us about the friend of the court, what you all are doing there. So when we start seeing bills or it was just a, you know, update for us. So we'll know what's, what's going on. And you all have explained that. Um, I'd ask our committee, are there other, any other things that, that I should bring up? No, maybe you covered it. Well, I would like to say though, to the rest of the board that, that the, uh, the difference in the memorials that, that go on the grave sides, there's, there's no compromise in quality between one or the other. It's kind of a changing of the guard and, and uh, Lee 
Lee's recommendation was to go with a, the lower priced one, but not because of a, a lesser quality. It, it was just as good a quality and a um, different, little different design, but one that he thought that would be uh, serve the purpose very well. So thank you. Thank you. And that um, is my report. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any other questions uh, uh, for Chair Yarborough from finance? Okay, seeing that there's none, uh, next item on the agenda is public comments. The public comments are only on the agenda items that are on today's agenda. So I will defer to Annette. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Scott. I am checking on YouTube to see if we have any public comments regarding the resolutions that are being voted on today. We'll just pause for just a second. Okay. okay, I believe you're good on public comments regarding the resolutions. I will remind everybody that there will be another opportunity for public comments, general public comments near the end of the meeting. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. Um, um, I was advised that uh, we're going to get a request to pull F as in Frank 2011365. That is the uh, fiscal year 2021 budget. Um, are there any other requests uh, for anything else to be pulled on the consent calendar uh, for separate, separate discussion? Mr. Okay. Vice Chair? Yes? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent calendar as presented minus F2011365. Is there support? Is there a support for Jim's motion? I'll support. Balrath. Thank you. Oh, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Oh, there you go. Kern. Yes. Freely. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Hugo. Yes. Kinkleman. Yes. Majeri. Majeri. I don't see his name. He's not, he's not unmuting himself. Hang on, I'm going to ask him to unmute. Can you come back to him, Diana? Meeks. Yes. Scott. Yes. Polarized. Yes. Yarborough. Yes. Chickering. Yes. Majeric. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, ma'am. Clerk. Um, Commissioner Curran, um, you made the motion. Um, would uh, you like to start uh, speaking about uh, F2011365? Would you like a motion first? And yes, then have sir. A motion? Then uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, approve uh, F2011365. Thank you. Is there support? Commissioner uh, Hugel will support. Thank you. Any discussion? <laughs> Mr. Vice Chair, this is Commissioner Freeling. Yes. Um, I'm glad to see that this resolution was uh, removed from the consent agenda so that we could discuss it separately. Um, you know, for me, I look at our budget and I just have a word of caution moving forward for 2021 and of course, 2022. You know, 2020, 
was a year that tested all of our resolve. You know, we've been faced with a pandemic. We've had several leadership changes um, during critical times in the budgetary process. Um, looking forward, forecasting is never certain, but I think we could all say with at least some confidence that 2021 and 2022 are going to be very challenging years for us. Um, revenue and resources are going to be uncertain. And I just want to take this time to ask that we all remember going forward that we're gonna be required to be very nimble in the way that we handle ourselves in the budget for 2021. We're gonna be requiring ourselves and our staff to constantly be sharpening that pencil and being vigilant in the dollars that we have been charged to be stewards of. Um, I'm looking at this budget and we are using general fund to balance it. And I'm hoping that next year and the following year, we're not required to dip into those funds continuously in order to make this budget be balanced. And so for that, I just wanted to make that statement before we move forward on voting. I am going to support this budget because I think that it is important that we remember this is a living document and it can be adjusted, but I just wanted to make that, that statement of caution. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate your comments. Um, are there any other board members that would like to uh, speak on this issue, on the budget? Yes, Commissioner Curran, uh, I just kind of, I want to echo uh, Commissioner Freeling's uh, expression. Um, I kind of looked at the 2021 budget as out of the norm. And I, I also intend to support the budget, but I think going forward, you know, we can't do this every year. <laughs> we know we're going to be in trouble if we do. Um, and so, yeah, I would ask that, uh, that Brian and, and all the staff stay vigilant in um, keeping an eye on this budget because we're looking at the 2022 budget. Um, having said all that, I think that Doug and Ben and, and Brian really did an excellent job it, working with the best they could work with uh, to present this budget to us. And so again, I agree with a lot of what Commissioner Freeling said uh, and I do also intend to support it. Thank you, Jim. Are there any other commissioners that would like to uh, speak? Okay, um, seeing none, that'll give me a chance to speak on it. Um, last year, I was the only one who voted against the budget because it wasn't a balanced budget. Um, now that COVID has hit, uh, we are in difficult times. We are in unprecedented times. And um, the, the thing that concerns me with this is um, it's a little misnomer on what our budget deficit is. It's not exactly what it shows there in the, in the uh, final figures. Um, I've had meetings with Brian and uh, with Doug and uh, it's put my heart at ease a little bit. What I'm really concerned with, and I think that all the commissioners uh, need to be concerned with, is you know, our job, our most important job is the fiscal management of the taxpayer's dollars. And yes, we manage their money the best we can uh, fiscally, uh, not so we're frivolent spending, I guess is the word. But what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with a serious problem that right now um, the state of Michigan uh, is really cutting back on our revenue sharing. And they have instinctively said, we're going to kind of supplement that with CARES Act money, uh, which we have received that's, that's help, going to help. Um, the problem is, is that we have a lot of other revenue sources beside the state, uh, such as the tribal uh, casino. We saw a big decrease this year in the amount of revenue sharing going to the LRSB because they were closed for three and a half months. Uh, we don't know what the future is going to bring for us, but 
But now that we've had this pandemic, uh, we have to throw that in the mix that uh, it could be something else also. The other issue with the state is, is that um, with the, the state being in the budget deficit that they are in, uh, last I heard it was 2.6 uh, uh, billion, but anyway, the, it's not gonna get any better is what I'm saying. And right now we were supplanted with some CARES Act money. Uh, my question is being the volatility of uh, Washington DC, we cannot count on any other types of funding coming out of Congress. I mean, we can't. Um, so that's what really has me concerned. Uh, I've been a strong proponent of balancing the budget. And like I said, I, last year I voted no, and it's tugging at my heartstrings because I want to support this budget because I, I believe like Jim said uh, that uh, Doug and Ben and Brian who, uh, you know, he, he showed up first day of work and we said, Brian, God bless you, here's the budget. And then, uh, you know, uh, so um, I, I probably too will support this, uh, but I think that we need to really consider moving forward. All the departments need to consider moving forward that we have a county to run. We have special services and, and things that we need to provide to the county, to the taxpayers. Um, it might be a time where we have to cut back a little bit on our capital projects, uh, things like that, and uh, some of the wish lists, which I have full faith in all our department heads uh, to do that and not to take advantage of such a thing. So um, I guess that's all I really have to say about it. But uh, if there's anybody else that has um, any other questions or comments that they'd like to present at this time, um, if there are none, then I would entertain a motion, or I would ask that if there isn't, um, then the clerk can call the roll. Um, may, may I ask, yes. you, Commissioner Scott, when you say the budget is not balanced, do you mean because we have used the extra funds in it, or what, what makes you say that? How can we pass? budget that it's not balanced well we're balancing it um what we're doing is we're balancing it uh using our reserves um okay. at, at some point in time my point has always been um if you did not have the reserves what would we do cut down cut down on what we bring to correct. it correct correct and i don't think there's one commissioner here that wants to even look or discuss at that but if there's ways that we can actually work within our, the department heads can work within their departments and work uh, with their budget, uh, there's, there's lean times and everybody can get through lean times. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, those, those know. pants are good for another year, you know, wear them. Okay. So, uh, rather than buy new, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, but when I say that about not being a balanced budget, is if, if we're taking from Peter to pay Paul, that is not really truly a balanced budget. You know, we're, we don't want to we don't want to get rid of our reserves. We may need them, and we it's already proven this year with COVID. So, yes, yes, thank, thank you. Yep. Okay. If there's no other uh, comments or anything, um, would the uh, clerk please call the roll? Freeland. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Hugo. Yes. Hinkleman. Yes. Majeri. Yes. Meeks. Yes. Yeah. Bullrat. Yes. Yarborough. Yes. Chickering. Yes. Curran. Yes. Scott. Yes. Love and yes, motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, next on the agenda, we do not have any other added resolutions. Um, and uh, we do have a closed session coming up. So I would like to bypass commissioner reports unless someone has something 
that is of uh, dire information for the rest of the board. Uh, I would suggest that we uh, hold off on those until next week, uh, if that's okay. Um, our next one that I think we need is administrator report, uh, Brian. Just to follow up on uh, what's been said at the committee levels, what's been said uh, here today, um, just a, a huge thank you to the, uh, the partnership with the uh, City of St. Joseph on uh, support for the Silver Beach project. Um, the, the project has now been approved by the various committees, by the, uh, the Board of Commissioners, and I'll be um, setting up a pre-construction meeting with our team, with the contractor, and uh, with the uh, City of St. Joe to ensure that that work at Silver Beach is done. We get it done um, uh, before the, uh, the winter really kicks into high gear. And uh, lastly, I want to thank the other uh, commissioners for uh, having faith in, in this project and the project team. Uh, we will get it done. We'll make it uh, very uh, good looking and uh, a proper reinforcement to protect our infrastructure and that public park. Those are my comments, sir. Thank you. Um, any questions for our administrator? Okay, uh, Annette. General public comments. Yes, I'm reaching out to our public to see if we have any. We have 16 people watching. Good. That's always a good thing. The more people we have watching, the better it is. Um, is there any other business that needs to come before the board uh, today? All right, seeing none, um, we go through the announcements. Uh, November 19th, we have a finance committee, a virtual meeting at 9 a.m. Uh, November 19th, we have a board of county commissioners virtual at 30 a.m. On November 26th, there will be no board meetings. And on November 26th and the 27th, the county facilities will be closed for the Thanksgiving holiday. And um, with that being said, um, I, I need to ask uh, about this because we are about to go into a closed session and as far as I know and am concerned, we will be conducting no business after we come out of a closed session. Um, if that is correct, or if I'm incorrect, uh, somebody let me know. But for the public, uh, I wanted you to know that we won't be doing any other county business after we come out of the closed session other than adjournment. Commissioner Scott? Yes. The, the Board of Commissioners may be asked to consider approval of a settlement strategy as presented by the county's attorney. That would be the only action that the board may be asked to do aside from that and adjourning the meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're welcome, sir. All right, if there's nothing else, I would uh, look for a motion to basically come out of our virtual general board meeting and uh, go into closed session to consult with our attorney regarding trial and settlement strategies. Commissioner Meeks makes that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Meeks. Is there a support? I support Michael Majerick. Thank you. Uh, will, the clerk, will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 Yes.
Uh, we will take a five-minute break or so while we